So how can we recognise and manage online harassment and violence? In the Philippines, Rappler CEO and Executive Editor Maria Ressa is really a case study in combating prolific online harassment in the context of that massive disinformation campaign with links back to the state. She's a former CNN war correspondent, but she says none of her experiences in the field actually prepared her for the massive and destructive campaign of gendered online harassment that she's experienced since 2016. She says, I've been called ugly, a dog, a snake. I've been threatened with rape and murder. That's in a story I wrote for UNESCO in a book about journalism safety. And she's repeated that story to me over and over again. She's received death threats and in addition she's been the subject of hashtag campaigns like Arrest Maria Ressa and Bring Her to the Senate that are designed to whip up online mobs to attack and discredit both Ressa and Rappler and to chill their reporting. It began as a spiral of silence and anyone who was critical or asked questions about extrajudicial killings was attacked, brutally attacked. The women got it worse and we've realised that the system is just set up to silence dissent designed to make journalists docile. We're not supposed to be asking hard questions and we're certainly not supposed to be critical, Ressa told me. Her fight back strategy includes the following. In the first instance, recognise the seriousness of the problem. Secondly, recognise the psychological impacts and facilitate psychological support for affected staff. Thirdly, use investigative journalism as a weapon in the fight back. Fourth, ask your loyal audiences to help repel and contain attacks. Fifth, tighten security on and offline in response to harassment. Sixth, publicly call on the platforms like Facebook and Twitter to do more to curtail and adequately manage online harassment. Advice for young women is that this is there is no better time to be a journalist because when you come in now you will help create what journalism is going to become not just now but in the future but there is also no more dangerous time to be a woman journalist the attacks online the exponential spread of this the kind of very personal things that you know when we were working for television stations you can hide behind the brand you can hide behind the camera now it's it's right there it's holding your hand you know so um, you've got to be strong you've got to to choose your path and move forward don't be undeterred by uh, by the shaky ground that you are, we sometimes have to walk on so what action could civil society organisations and media employers take in response to this escalating crisis? Here are some ideas. A zero tolerance approach to sexual harassment in newsrooms, both on and offline, and the promotion of cultures of inclusion where everybody feels safe to speak out about their experiences and empowered to act if they witness something inappropriate. The provision of physical security, technical assistance, legal advice and psychological support as required when dealing with women journalists affected by sexual violence and sexual harassment, again, on or offline. The development of holistic strategies, so involve security and cybersecurity staff, senior editors, editorial trainers, workplace health and safety teams, social media editors and so on, in developing and disseminating policies and guidelines when you're dealing with incidents involving online or offline threats. Recognise now that these things interact and they overlap. Gendered safety training. Safety training needs to be more bespoke. Most existing safety training is run by men and where it does address specific issues facing women journalists, it's rarely done sensitively. This requires greater understanding of the emotional and psychological aspects of violence that impact on women journalists. There's a need too for news organisations to ensure better access for women to the kinds of support, confidential where required, that they need to help them reintegrate physically, psychologically and emotionally, and to ensure their careers are not negatively impacted if they suffer violence or harassment that requires them to take time away from their duties. What about implementation of gender sensitive safety risk assessments and digital threat assessments integrated where required? 
Then there's a need for recognition and acknowledgement of the seriousness of online harassment from senior management right down to junior reporters. Noting that policies and action plans need to be disseminated to all staff. It's also important to escalate early and to report incidents of abuse, whether they're on or offline, to the police when it's appropriate. Investing in online community engagement management is also important, including clear policies and guidelines for intervention, along with adoption and communication of effective abuse reporting tools and processes, and adding misogynistic terms to comment moderation guidelines, for example. It's important too to devote editorial resources to coverage of these issues because doing so will help educate broader communities. Make a plan too to deal with potential online harassment at the commissioning stage of what we might term lightning rod stories. So stories that are likely to attract online harassment of women journalists or their sources, such as stories about feminism. Finally, provide greater support for freelancers and those who are more vulnerable, such as interns, and women of colour, non-binary people, and members of the LGBTQ community. Thanks very much for going through this with me, and I hope you've learned something, and I also hope you'll be able to put some of it into practice as journalists or newsroom managers, or as student journalists looking to begin your career.